Yo, what's up, y'all? It's Darius and Jared here from the Sincerely Japan podcast, and we want to talk to you guys about our sponsor, Tire Streets. Tire Streets is an online tire retailer that caters to the motorsport community. So they do everything from like semi slick to your drift tires to your knobby off road tires, man. They got it all. And they got all kinds of like programs to make it easy for you guys yeah. out there to get your, your drift on, your grip on, anything. So, Jared, tell them what they got. Get your off road on too, dude. Get, what it, get, get all of it on, you know? <laughs> Let's get it on. Um, they've got a really cool program called Rider Return. Basically, what you do is you do a first time purchase on any wheel, right? So, it, it doesn't mean you can buy the same set of tires over and over and get free tires forever, but you can try out different tires. You can get a set for 30 days if you don't like them or if you want something grippy or you want something less grippy or whatever. Uh, send them back and they'll refund you 30 days to try out a tire. It's super cool. They offer free shipping. I think Darius already said that. Use code sincerely15 at checkout at tirestreets.com. Again, that is sincerely15. It's 15% off and the tires are already very affordable. Um, it's just a, a good quality tire for cheap and it's awesome. And so it was a no brainer for us to offer that for you guys. You're welcome. My check, my check. We'll protect your neck, Mike. Check. Damn. Okay, Mad Mike. What is this? I just been watching. Killer Mike, stuff. not Mad Mike. What am I saying? I'm too used to drifters. <laughs> Mad Mike. Yo, dog. I heard you <laughs> like TVs, so we put TVs inside your TV. That's Exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fucking Mad Mike, bro. No, it's not. Exhibit. Yo, no. So Exhibit is obviously on the show, but Mad Mike was always the guy that gave the rundown of the car. You would always. Be no, like, he wasn't. Was he really? Yeah. Exhibit would just stand there in the background, awkward as fuck, dude. I've been watching. Pit my ride is on Amazon Prime right now. So no, I've been it's not. It is here. Oh shit! I didn't know it's, this. Okay, it. Yo, there is one. There's a fucking. It's a lady that gets completely ruined. Like the kids, yeah. like I like Need for Speed, so they are like this is what we're shooting for, and they put up a picture of the world's ugliest car. He's like, yeah, let's do it. And oh my god! If only this kid knew what he had. That's the sex like, spec, dude. That's like the early two thousand shit. <laughs> oh god, um, it's so bad. It's like orange and green. Dude, that's so good. Uh, COVID's flaring up. COVID's <laughs> treated it like it's asthma. What is this? <laughs> It'll never leave you, bro. It's It'll terminal forever. It's, I got terminal COVID. I got a long hauler. We're already I'm, in the episode. Um, <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Ah, oh, oh, dude, I was about to refill my glass. What? All right, refill your glass. Play. We're playing the intro. Okay. Ah, yeah, my God, not this right, never seen a chase run like this in my life. Oh, my God. A textbook head-to-head battle. Welcome to Sincerely Japan, the drifting podcast. <laughs> that was good timing dude i played i played the intro while you were gone and i was like this intro is like 15 seconds it's not gonna do anything uh yeah, i'm quick yeah well, cheers it, everybody <clears throat> so darius is trying out this wine thing dude tell me what this is oh pinky's up bro up. damn <laughs> reds in a champagne glass you're bastardizing the whole game tell me yeah, tell me spongebob about taught me one thing is pinky's up for life so what is Yo, this? that's our new slogan what is it? It's yeah. um, is that our new slogan? <laughs> Pinky's up. Is that the name of this episode? Pinky's up for life. <laughs> I think it's called <clears throat> shit. COVID, bro. Uh, I think it's called Sau- Sauvignon Blanc or something. It's some red shit. I don't know. It's real sour. It's but... Some red shit. Yeah. Please go to like the a buzz wine group is a more like... even buzz than like whiskey or something. It kind of you float in. You're not just like hard fucking max out the RPMs. Dude, I'm hard all the time. What are you talking about? I'm hard all the time, bro. Um, anyways, welcome back, everybody. Episode, God, what are we on? Seventeen? Uh, is this seventeen? Episode TBD. TBD. Episode TBD. <laughs> I'm looking it up. Sixteen. Seventeen. No, it is seventeen. Damn. Keeping the train rolling, babies. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Thank you for being here. We're having a blast. This episode is so late, and I'm so sorry, guys. Um, I'm gonna try to get this out today, just to be able to push something. Um. So that's that. This was supposed to come out on Monday. Life's been nuts. Um, I've got some really cool shit going on just in my own life. And Darius has yeah. shit going on in his life. And 
Jared's cooking in the background, y'all. Man, I wish we could tell you, bro. But he's he's like, ah, 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 he's chefing back there. Me, I'm yeah, just some over little, here. Little bee shit. <laughs> <laughs> Please go watch the video episode if you're not already. <laughs> he said, ah, ah. The whole, dude, I haven't seen that shit since like 2012. God, what a time to be alive, huh? A little B, 2012. Yeah, it feels like forever ago. It does feel like forever ago. That was a different era. That was when you thought Lil B was wilding. And then he, everybody you was get like. somebody on the show from 2012, like uh, <laughs> a special guest. Like a time traveler? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> 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 yeah, we should also get Thomas Edison, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Ask him what he thinks about the current car market. Um I guess speaking of historical figures, that's a good it's <laughs> a good segue into the first topic. Um we we realized that we never discussed why we're called sincerely Japan, which it's probably pretty obvious, right? That like that's how you that's how you sign off a letter. Um and so when we were coming up with names, I just wanted something that was definitive and very concise, right? Which is why I added the Drifting Podcast. Because I was like, if it was just in Silly Japan, people would be like, is this a travel show? Like, what are we doing? Um, drifting, to, in my in my eyes, was like Japan's love letter to motorsports, right? It was like, here's this dope shit that we made. Here you go. Um, and so that's why I called us in Silly Japan, dude. Because I was like, this is them signing off um, on their like motorsports legacy, you know? Um, at least in... in you know, current events, who knows what motorsports are going to look like in a hundred years. Um, yeah. I mean, just to piggyback off of what Jared just said, I mean, I had nothing to do with the naming of the show. That was a hundred percent his like brain baby, but I will say based on how you explain it, it makes so much sense. Like all the stuff that we enjoy around car culture, you know, Japanese cars, the style, the drifting, it does come from Japan. So it's it's like they dropped this bomb on us, and now we're still reaping the the you know. That's a suggestive reference, bro. Let's maybe <laughs> not. Let's maybe not talk about bombs of Japan in the same sentence. No, they dropped the bomb on us this time. <laughs> you got it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> but it's a good bomb. It's not a bad bomb. It's a good bomb. <laughs> oh my God, dude! I'm done. Um, it's gonna be called a sick cast. <laughs> You're coughing, I'm coughing. We both got COVID. I'm sorry, <laughs> listeners. You get to listen to our sickness and Darius's pinky. Oh, your pinky was down that time. All right. Yeah, we're bringing down the sophistication. That <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> pinky's up. What are pinkies up for then? All things that are good, and then just down for Harambe. <laughs> just down. pinky's down for Harambe. All right. <laughs> okay. You know, I thought I thought putting dicks out was enough. I didn't know we had a pinkies down <laughs> at the same time. Anyway, so yeah, that was the namesake of it. Um, you know, we've been doing interviews for the past couple episodes. This is the first episode with Darius back on it, um, which is exciting in itself, obviously. And so, oh my gosh, excuse me. This is the first episode that we've had Darius back because we've just had back-to-back interviews without him. Um so obviously super stoked to have Darius back. We're back to bullshit again in Drift Talk and whatever. Um, we did have a, a reader write in. Super nice dude. He was a cool cat to talk with. Blake underscore R32 on Instagram if you want to go check him out. And he said, hey dudes, I drift my R32 and people think I'm nuts for it. Um, this is not verbatim. This is off the, off the dome, bro. Uh, but he was like, you know, people think I'm nuts for drifting this really clean car. What What's your take on that? Like, am I crazy or is it just fine? Um, and we've we've touched similar topics in the past. I think the most, like, and I looked at it. His car's super clean. It's so nice, dude. Like that color is perfect. It's like a really dark green, right? Isn't it like a dark green or brownish kind of metallic, whatever? Um, pull it up so I can enhance. It's it. super clean, bro. I will say two things about this topic, and and please chime in if you think differently drifting is a style sport it'll always be a style sport so i think drifting a nice car is kind of the point (laughs) mainly you know what i mean but i also think too with him being in america a lot of american culture is very like function over style in most cases for Mm -hmm. most grassroots events um like 
most people that I've seen have power and hydro and seats and you know but the body of the car is like the last thing to really get done if ever it like it almost never gets done if they're like oh it'll send and then they send it which is fine and it's fun dude like that's the whole thing right is like drifting's all about fun that's a fun functional car um mm. and more power to them but at the same point if your shit looks good, bro, like that is a flex too, but I don't think you're nuts for doing that. Like an R34 Skyline or an R32 four door is what I meant to say. Um, is not like terribly uncommon. You know, if you needed to reshell it, you could, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's egregious. I think it's, you know, dope, more power to him. What do you, what do you think? I'm looking back through his timeline to try to see, get a sense of where he was stationed. And actually I'm stupid. Cause I could just look at his fucking, Y plate and see where he was uh, stationed Damn. any second. Uh, I can't read that. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like Yakota but, uh, or Iwakuni or somewhere mainland. Because it, it for must you, be Yakota. It must be somewhere down south. Because otherwise, it was it like it. was it like Hachinohe or Oki? <laughs> and if it wasn't that, you're out. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, just for those who don't know, on Japanese license plates, it said it's kind of like how in the states they have it, but it'll say in kanji the area where you registered. Right. And, you know, I know the two because that the two that I'm familiar with, but I don't recognize this one. But uh, obviously he brought it with her from Japan. But uh, as the resident R32 guy, I have to say, what's the name? Blake. Blake, you crazy for this one, G. Oh, fuck out of here. For this one. No, See, I feel I'm like I feel like I'm he'd be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, for real. For real. <laughs> do your thing, bro. Don't don't let other people fucking put you down. You know, it, we've talked about it a thousand times. The cars are expensive. But drifting in general is expensive. Right. Like, I don't know where this idea comes from. Like, he's like, yo, that's an R32. Are you crazy? Are you going to fucking ruin it? And it's like, as long as you're having fun doing it, then what difference does it make? I mean, I would much rather see a car get used and abused than see a car just sit in, like how my car is just sitting right now in the garage. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah like, they're made to be driven. Shit, bro. And I, I said this on the short, when I drifted the 240, that was the most fun I ever had in that car. And I've had it for 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and two weekends ago was the most fun I've ever had in it. And so it's like, if that's bringing you joy, dude, like smiles per mile are worth so much more than anything else, you know? And if you get that from a street car, that's great. But if you want to get it on the track and go, like, I think your time enjoyed in that car is, is going to way outweigh any sort of negative experience that might come from it whether it breaks or you crash it or whatever like that's a temporary thing and you can always fix it um or yeah. reshell it <laughs> i shouldn't say you can always fix it and obviously you can't if it's like a one-of-one -one car but a, a four-door skyline is certainly not it just means you're fucking falling out of control bro and people can't keep up yeah i mean i've always <laughs> had a soft spot for the four doors too i do too i've always wanted one i've, I've had <laughs> the two doors i really want a four door but um I don't know. And you kind of have to think back back to when these cars were new and in Japan, they were drifting these bitches right out the fucking the showroom like stock. Like really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see, that's what they're they're made to have fun with. So right. I don't understand why people would think any kind of way about that. Right. I mean, it's like they always say smiles for miles and all that bullshit. So, yeah. Um, when I was when I was heading home, because Darius was like, he hit me up three hours ago and was like, yo, are we recording? And he hit me up yesterday. And he was like, yo, are we recording? And I was like, fuck, I forgot about all these. And so <laughs> I was driving home today and I was listening to Drake's Lemon Pepper Freestyle. Digging through the B sides, you know, I don't think. Do you think Lemon Pepper is like an A side for Drake? Um. Da -da, ba -ba 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 -da. Well, the fact that I don't remember anything it, about B side, it it's B side, B side. In <laughs> Damn, I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I'm like the biggest Drake stand, but his he's kind of getting to the stage where he's repetitive with this stuff. Yeah. So I remember the classics that are from my generation, but his new stuff, it's like I've I've seen it, heard it before. Basically, right. he raps about the same thing all the time. It's like I'm yeah. so rich. My life's so hard. I can't find a good girl. He's recently gotten the body game, though. The body game. The body game. Fucking out your body and people, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm saying he's he's got some killer talk coming, dude. And I'm like, listen, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not trying to get cap. <laughs> I'm not trying to get a hitman on me. I don't think Drake's gonna fucking put Drake, a hit out on you. <laughs> I think you don't even know, dude. He has so much money, he could he could pay fucking Putin to go kill somebody. I don't um, think he could. 
<laughs> Anyways, so I'm listening to Lemon Pepper Freestyle, and there's a line in it where he goes, asking if I know Beyonce or Nicki Minaj, and then a couple of beats, and he goes, of course. <laughs> and he, he slips that. <laughs> fucking dumb, bro. I'm Drake. What the fuck are you talking about? And uh, who would be that for drifting? Like, and, and hard mode is if you can get the same syllables, right? Beyonce uh, well, or Nicki Minaj, eight syllables. I would go of course. Adam, LZ, or I don't know who else. Who else? It, Nori, Noriaro in Japan. That's nine. I mean, Damn. That's a good, you had a good two, dude. I didn't even think about those. It doesn't quite roll off. Fuck, man. But if you're asking me honestly who I think are like the most interesting people to watch right now, I always tune in for Noriaro episodes because he got that, he's that Japan plug. And fucking Adam LZ, I'm not such a super, super huge fan of Adam LZ, but if you look at who's doing like the most shit in the game right now, I guess you would say it's him. Like he recently signed with fucking is it uh RTR? It's not RTR, yeah. And I mean, big deal, and, bro. Big know, deal. people are gonna hate on him because he's kind of like I don't know if he's necessarily a rich kid, but he obviously comes from some. He's means. popping, dude. Like, well, it's not yeah, even so that. He, I think he just built an empire for himself, you know. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I feel like he probably didn't start at the same starting spot as everybody else, but that's okay. I'm not hating on him Damn, for we're it. We're never gonna get Adam it, on the show now. I'm sorry, guys. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it's a good thing. I'm saying if you follow your passion, because you know, you, just because you come from a good starting point doesn't mean you're still gonna make your dreams happen. You still have to put in the work to chase it. Adam LZ, please don't put a hit out on me, bro. Listen, fucking don't don't send no fucking shooters. Listeners, out it's been a I'm cool run. Hating. If you want to listen to Adam LZ on a podcast, I guess you're gonna have to re-listen to Maximum Driftcast again because we're not gonna get him. Oh my God. I, I'm not. <laughs> Hey, bro. I want to know the story. Like, how did you come yeah. up? Because you know, obviously, like I said, he obviously you know comes from means. Does he I come from? Why means. do you say that though? What, what what does that mean? He comes from means. I, okay, you know, I take everything back. Run it back. Run it back. Yo, Adam, you're a cool dude. I like your wait, style. Wait, 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 like wait, wait, wait. No, just edit everything else out before this. Just, I, I like your style, bro. I'll I'll suck your dick. I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Why do you think he comes from means though? You know what? If I'm gonna be dead ass, be dead ass. Be straight, straight from shooting from the hip, it's because of Instagram comments. I don't know shit about this guy, <laughs> oh, but everybody in the comments is like, that. "Yo, he, yo, he, he uh, must be nice to be a rich kid." Blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure he's heard it a thousand times. Hey, you, that's what we do on SJ, yo. We keep it one hundred. So I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit you and tell you that I did research. That's I fair. Saw in no, the that's comments fair though. And it was like, yo. And it's always easy to hate on someone who you think has it easier than you. It's always easy to hate that you want. Right. It's exactly. easy to hate so. on the guy that has all the Blitz 03s. <laughs> That's and, what I And saying. there's no more left for the rest of us. <laughs> He's got the Blitz 03 empire. Fucking. Oh, I, every time I see a fucking Blitz 03 Dude. post on Facebook, it's That's like someone selling it. It's like $9,000. I know what I have. It's like, what is happening? Like, but that's a completely different topic. I think but you... Adam LZ, you're a cool guy. That's why I said you're one of the hottest in the game right now. And Noriaro hit me up. I've been in your DMs. Scroll back. That's me. <laughs> Scroll way, way back for you. <laughs> that's like Noriaro is a good one. I didn't think about that. Um, cause he's not so much like a, a hottest in the game for like a driver, but in terms of a content creator and a, uh, like a, a household name, you know, even my wife, like whenever he's got a new episode, I'll say, Oh, can we watch that? Can we watch that? Yeah. And it's just like, shit. I think Hard. it's, you know, cause he really does capture the feeling of like being in Japan just by the virtue that he understands the language. Right. I'm okay. Now I'm hating again. I don't want to see a bunch of fucking foreigner dudes just going over to japan and doing the same shit we've seen a thousand times oh let's go to the fucking what's that parking lot that everybody goes to I say, oh, we're going street drifting in japan like yeah. i don't give a shit about that stuff i want to know the real deal like what what it's like and Nor- yeah Nor- and Nor- he Nor- gets Nor- like that day to day stuff you know yeah like he'll he'll fill time dude he'll be like i'm in this parking lot check it out not even yeah, Daikoku. He'll be like, I'm at home, Mac. Look at the school car. <laughs> exactly. Yo, there's a, on the last episode where he was working on his S15, he walks into home Mac and like his like overalls yeah. looking like a bum. Yeah. And I was like, yo, I've done that. I've been right. that guy. And it's even worse because I'm a black guy. So I was walking in there with my fucking, I just looked like a hot mess. And I just needed like one bit. And I was like checking out and the lady is looking at me. I was like, I'm sorry. I know you're probably terrified right now, but I just need this 14 millimeter. Let me go. I always felt extra masculine when I walked in with coveralls. I don't feel 
I feel like I saw Japanese people being bummy too. You remember the store Workman? Uh, yeah, that's where they have all like the tools and stuff and like random shit, right? No, that was uh Workman. Who was, was it? Like, the paint pl- paint place. Workman was like their their Carhartt store. Remember, and it had all the coveralls and shit. I think I've driven past it a couple of times in Hachinohe. People would just wear their coveralls the out, dude, and then Japanese workers would have those crazy like parachute pants that yeah. they'd wear in the <laughs> stores and shit, dude. I think our coveralls were fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, you. I wish I would have taken a picture because you're not visualizing what actually happened. I have my coveralls, <laughs> but I had the top part off, like tight around my waist. Just blood all over your and, face. <laughs> yeah, I had fucking coolant <laughs> all over my t-shirt, fucking grease everywhere. I was like in the middle of like doing the engine pool, and mm. I was trying to fucking disconnect the little clutch, um, what the release bearing. Yeah, and I needed like an, you know, like a. I forgot what the fuck I needed, but yeah, I looked like a straight, like I literally looked like I walked in off the street, had shit in my hair, rocks in my hair. I'm surprised they didn't just shoot Damn. me on the spot. Did but you? Japan doesn't get down like that. Um, sorry, dude. Somebody's getting back to me about a beamer, which we'll talk about later. Uh, w- was it red coolant or green coolant? Green. Okay, you're good. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> if you walked in with like red coolant all over your shirt, <laughs> that might look a little bit different. But then that'd be some very like diluted blood. It would probably look just like Kool Aid, you know. <laughs> um, and I'm buying like h- hardcore tools. Like I have a job to finish. I'm just like just walking with a, shit. a bloody hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I need zip ties, please. You're fine as zip ties. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, um, on our list we wrote down shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's no fucking segue from that, dude. <laughs> um, we wrote down it because Nissan has the heritage program, right? Where they will provide parts for the R32, right? Isn't that the only, or, or the Skyline's just in general? The R chassis is the uh, only one, I think. Yeah. R, well, right now, as far as the body parts and stuff, and a lot of the, yeah, okay, I'll say yes, R32, but all the engine stuff obviously is a uh, crossover between the two, three, and the four. Yeah, but you can get body panels, brake lines, all kinds of random shit for the R32. It's expensive as shit, but let's talk R chassis for a minute here. I was talking with somebody else uh, yesterday. No, fuck, last week, dude. And um, he was he's trying to find an R34, and he's like, "Yo, I cannot find anything less than like eighty grand, right, for a GTR." And even eighty sounds low. Um, but I was like, dude, at that point, just get an R35. What's your take on this? I think the R35 is like the best motor. I think it looks sick as fuck. The only downsides is that it's only a coupe if you wanted a four-door, which obviously you're not going to get a four-door GTR. But anyways, it's only a coupe and it doesn't have a true like manual trans. Two things. Did you know that there actually is a four-door GTR? It's the is it the 33? Version. Well, yes. It's the 33 Autec version. And actually, was that an R? Was that a GTR though? Because I knew they put the RB twenty six, but I thought it was NA. No, it was, they have an R thirty three Altec GTR oh, four door with the body kit and everything. It's all but wide body. Second thing onto the question that you actually asked: R thirty four, R thirty five. I want to be realistic and be like, yeah, get an R thirty five. It's obviously the more realistic choice. But if I was in the market. I'd get an R34. <laughs> like, if I had the money like that, I would get yeah. an R34. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just, that's just me, though. I, dude, I'd pick up a, I mean, a 35 is like a dream car for me anyways, but they just yeah. look so good, dude. I don't know. I would get them both, but, yeah. <laughs> like, so I, got I a, would just get them both and not live in a house. I got I a debit card, in. right? And on my debit card, I've got uh, Frozen. Got Anna and Elsa on my debit card, right? And they're doing this really cute, like, back-to-back pose. Uh, for those that don't know, I have a daughter and a son, for what it's worth. But my son's not – he doesn't fuck with Frozen like that. And uh, so, anyways, I got this card so that when I went to the Disney store, I could get shit for 10% off, right? Boom. Frozen card. So, I'll go to the, I'll go to get coffees or whatever, and then I'll have the cashiers be like, oh, my God, your card is so cute. And I'm like, this girl's obviously into me because of my debit card. That's I think every dude every dude thinks that shit I think dude whenever any girl talks to you period you're like damn she kind of into me though. <laughs> yeah. And I know I know that's my overinflated ego dude that's not the case at all. That's not the case at all. These are very nice young women. 
totally respectable, <laughs> upstanding citizens. So I'm not trying to be fucked up and weird about it, but I'm also kind of being fucked up and weird about it. Anyway, I'm clipping my mic. I'm getting too hot. And, uh, and anyways, so then I start this back and forth, right? And then I'm like, okay, well, which one, like, we're going to fight. You know what I mean? Like, which, is it Anna or is it Elsa? And then when they go, Sven, I want to fucking kill myself. And that was you five seconds ago when you're like, I would just buy them both. Like, I would get a 34 and a 35. <laughs> like, bitch, that's that not the, the question. <laughs> that was the world's most roundabout way. It dude. came back, bro. <laughs> it came <laughs> back. Um, So that's what I'm saying, dude, is you can't, hey, if you could get a 35 or any other arch chest and you're like, dude, I wish I could just buy them both. <laughs> I mean, okay. So if you if you gave me a budget, if you oh, that's the most 80, mid answer you could have given me, <laughs> if it was eighty thousand dollars that I had to spend, I would get the world shittiest R thirty four GTR. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Really? <laughs> I couldn't help myself, dude. I have a problem. It's you like, wouldn't just get I, a nice R thirty five. Like eighty grand could buy you a decent R chassis. Yeah. Or you could probably get a thirty three for that price. I know you the 34s. Can get 33 for $80,000. Yeah. You How expensive good. are they in the States? Because I'm not privy to that market. Well, but like a 33. Over here in the UK, they're like 40 grand, 40,000 yeah. pounds is going to get you into a decent, a nice, I would right. say nice, but you never know what's hiding underneath the covers of those cars. Right. So an outwardly nice GTR is yeah. what you're going to get. Probably 35, 40 ish. I don't know. I'm not GTR shopping, but. Yeah. That sounds right. I mean, that's what it was last I checked, but the market's been nuts. And speaking of the market, your boy's trying to get a new car and not even like a drift car. Let's not front. I'm not trying to buy anything crazy. I was trying to get a manual rear wheel drive three series, like a, like a E90, 328, you know, 330. I don't want a 335 because I don't want to fuck with the turbo shit. Uh huh. But I could get a 330, which is like the fastest non-turbo that they made. But... The market is so nuts right now, dude. And like, I didn't think about it when I was looking, but every car that I, I enjoy, because I'd like a wagon too, but finding a rear wheel drive manual wagon, they only made like 400 of them. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Anyways, it's hard as shit, bro. And everything is super expensive. So I think now, because ever since I talked to Micah about his 740 IL, he has that extended wheelbase 7 series. Uh -huh. I really like the big heavy shit. And so I'm thinking about getting like an LS 460, you know, like one of those super, like new fucking ultra luxury Lexus joints, dude. Like these just fucking massive. They put, yeah. I, was, I was looking up wheel fit me yesterday. They rock like 22s on these things. And I'm like, that's way too big, dude. What happened to the good old like 18 and 19 inch VIP cars? You know, now we're stuffing 22s on shit. <laughs> Well, it's all about that. It's all about that fitment, how much you can like fill out that wheel well. So as soon as someone discovers you can get away with the 22. 22 is fucking not? excessive, bro. That's <laughs> way too big. As long as it's not like a 32 and you're sitting up like four feet off the ground, then I think you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I might be. <laughs> Let me uh, look up. You said the LS460. LS460s are me. so sick, dude. It's just the newer, it's the newer Celsius, you know? Ooh. Well, it's not. It's an LS460, but... It's the continuation of that chassis, and it's got like the quote unquote new UZ motor, which is like a one U, what is it, one one UF or one FU? See, I know you've dabbled into the VIP game. I've never done that, but it seems like a lifestyle that I would want to live. Yo, my question to you is: if you bought a car like this and like put all that work into it, would you keep it as a family car, or would it end up being a show car, just like your SEMA? Both. sitting in the garage both mm -hmm. honestly so i was looking at it right they come with factory air suspension so you can get an aftermarket uh -huh. controller and basically slam it on the factory air shit for mm -hmm. like 600 bucks dude and so adjustable ride height off rip five by 120 like 20 to 22 inch wheels you can get for like 1500 bucks ish so like all in you're talking two grand to have like a fucking baller ass looking shit bro and it's not even that expensive to start with and they go for like two hundred and forty thousand miles because they're hella reliable yeah stupid what year are we talking I'm talking like an 08 old ish mm. Mm. we're not a drifting podcast anymore um 
This is you could drift this for a VIP podcast. <laughs> I thought about that actually. I thought about like what kind of what kind of manual swaps could you put behind that V8 because it makes like 300 and 380 horsepower, something like that. It's it's somewhat respectable, but I also imagine it's a fucking heavy ass car. Um, I'm going to look at one today. Do the back seats recline? They have their own center console with heated seats in the back, bro. It is like insane, dude. Anyways, when was the last time you bought a car? My TSX last May. You have a problem. Why? It's been almost a full year. <laughs> almost a full year. That's not that's bad. An accomplishment. That's for you. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> The TSX doesn't really fit my kids like I was hoping it would. Um, uh-huh. Anyways, this so has any reclinable, re- reclinable rear leather seats. <sighs> it's for the kids. It's for the kids. Dude, my son, <laughs> my son's gonna be fucking, you know, dropping him off to school in style. Uh huh. He's gonna be back there like, eh, 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 and you'll be like, stop <laughs> reclining the seats. I thought, blow the back I thought that sounded fair to something else. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are we talking about? <laughs> Every time he gets out, I just got to play All I Do Is Win by T-Pain, dude. <laughs> that shit's so dumb. Get a soundboard for the car. Anyways, um, we we got another write-in from one of our listeners, Jonah Long Roof Lex on Instagram. Shout-outs to him. He's he's the goat. He's goaded up with the sauce, yeah, as the TikTokers the say. Wallet, um yeah vip wall dude we should make a wall that should be your wall behind you let's just have them all send selfies and they're they'll live on your wall forever <laughs> i don't want it in my house once, once we can the put patreon it in your house. comes through we'll have a producer tier if y'all want to get on a producer tier <laughs> and we'll, we will shout y'all every episode 50 bucks that's a just month, a, bro. a peek peek into the future gotta get the bag <laughs> peek it, maybe not a peek into the future <laughs> <laughs> Um, depends on how this next year goes. That's she. Uh, so Jonah asked us to talk about real wheels versus replicas, and I think replica is a better term than a fake wheel, right? Because obviously, there's no such thing as like a fake wheel. They're all tangible. They're all real. You can hold them. You can put them on your car. Like that's very real. Um, but in terms of replicas, right? Talking about the quality of a replica now versus a wheel that has come out in the 1990s. Um, and this is something that I want to look into a little bit more in depth. And I actually want to do the same thing with steering wheels. Uh, and so just look out on the horizon for some fucking cool video content. But anyways, back to the podcast, um, talking about, and these are strictly opinions. I've done exactly zero research on this. However, that being said, (sighs) woman to take over. It's tough, man, because like, I think. It depends on the wheel too, right? It's like, is it monoblock or is it a multi-piece? Um, because they break in kind of different ways too. Yeah, I'm team replica all day. And I'm really? just going to say it right now. Team wow. replica. I've got freaking, on the stage, it came with replica R34 wheels. Get your, wheels. Fucking, get your money a... up, dog. <laughs> no, d- if the quality is there, I mean, there's no reason not to. Like You say so. I- I'm thinking of, okay, so... As the GTR guy, you have the Nismo LM wheels. Yeah. A set of Nismo LM wheels for like, it's going to set you back like seven, eight, nine, ten grand. Just get the depending GT4s. Depending on the fitment that you need. Huh? Just get the GT4s. Problem solved. Well. Boom. You're talking about LM GT4s? Mm-hmm. Well, let's look up the price of that. Those LM are cheap-ish. Do, 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 do. Just killing time here. So for for this one right here, an LM GT4 is 800 pounds. That's like $1,000 for one wheel. So for a full set, that's going to be four grand. There's a company that makes replicas, especially of the older ones. I th- I'm talking about like, I think it's the LM GT2s or ones, yeah. the multi-piece ones. Those people want like fucking 10, 12 grand for those. Now. Yeah, those are wildly and it's expensive. Like, and there's a, there's a company that's making replicas of those for, you know, like three two, three grand, something like that. And it's like, why would you not? Especially since nobody's out here fucking tracking these cars and these wheels. You just want the look. That's so a good point, dude. I don't I, have a problem with that. That's a very good point. I feel like most of the people that argue against replicas are people that just daily drive them anyways. Yeah. Because, but you, so I just want to say there are certain brands that make replicas that are reputable. Yeah, like, for sure. You know, they're not going to crack on you when you're going over like a freaking, you know, speed bump. 
all those horror stories you see, it's like, okay, I mean, you knew that was gonna happen when you paid fucking five hundred dollars for a set of wheels. Of course that's gonna happen. Right. But but not only that go ahead. I was gonna say, especially in the States, you're seeing a lot more brands that are I would consider to be reputable that are making replica stuff because the cost to import that stuff from Japan is just why not just make it your own? I mean, you have you sure you're copying the style. But it's like, yo, for if someone makes a set of Blitz 03 replicas, they're going to make a fucking killing. And I don't know if that exists already. It does. But it's like everybody, everybody's like, oh, these are real, real, real wheels, real wheels. And at the end of the day, not everybody has that kind of money to spend on. There's a couple different companies that started making uh, Blitz replicas. I know 326 Power just started making them, but I think there's a gosh. It's like maybe Heritage Wheel. It's one of these like VR or three piece. They own their own like. I don't know if they own them, but they're affiliated with other wheel companies too. Uh-huh. One of them definitely makes a replica, and I don't know which one it is. Um, but yeah, those reps exist, and people are already buying them, and it is a good value, and they're proven to be like decent wheels. And it's like you said, and I think too, the nature of just existing as a company is, of course, the shit that comes out the gate first is gonna suck. Compared to the stuff that you're making 5, 10, 15 years down the line when you actually have processes and R&D and a bit more staff, like, of course those companies are going to get better at the longer that they're around. I mean, that's exactly what happened with Megan. And I, I'm mm. pretty sure we've talked about this before. Um, but that's just the nature of all fucking companies. Like, that's just how it works. And so even if a rep, you know, when XXRs first came out, like, yeah, you would see all the time about people breaking them. But today... It's, I'm sure, a lot different as they've grown and become a bigger company. Same can be said with a lot of these other guys that have stuck around, too. I hear all the time, like, people shitting on, like, NRG, especially for their, like, quick release stuff, Mm. because they copied, and I'm not even going to say they necessarily copied, but it's really reminiscent of a lot of work spell stuff. People are always like, don't get an NRG, get a work spell, get a work spell, get a work spell. But it's like, obviously... More, a lot of people are buying NRG stuff and they're obviously a fairly reputable. Every company's going to have like, a you know, you have a freak accident and everybody takes that one one sample and just blows it up on the internet. It's like, see, this is why we don't buy this company stuff. And it's like, well, that right. was probably just a freak accident that got by QCs and it's not like. Well, but at the same time, can we really be, are we being hypocritical because. I run NRG. I don't think it's hypocritical. I, well, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that specifically. I'm just saying, like in general, we all have the brands. Like, if I had the money, and I'm gonna go buy something, and work, it works Bell or NRG, I'm gonna buy the Works Bell. You know, because that brand power that comes with well, it. Well, right, like, exactly. I mean, that's just a but societal like, influence too. I mean, it's like the difference between buying a Rolex and a Casio. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you had the money, like, of course you're gonna buy the Rolex because that's just something to be like, yeah, I got a Rolex. You know, when I post a photo of my Blitz 03s, that's like those dudes that post their watch on the Beamer steering wheel. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's that kind of post. But that's for me. It's like, hey, check this shit out, dog. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have this stuff. You know, that's me with my tires. Right. I like, lick the rubber. And we're like, you guys can't even afford to lick rubber like this. But anyway. Yo, some, <laughs> listen, some people be licking rubber, dog. <laughs> But uh, not, not my whole thing is not everybody's got money like that. Someone's got to cater to the mid tier. When it comes to replicas and shit like that, just don't go to the absolute bottom of the bucket. Stick around the mid tier, and you're probably gonna be fine. Freaking right. And you know what? I'm gonna say also a lot of those replica companies. A lot of people I see, especially in the states, are running those wheels on their actual track cars because they're cheap yeah they're so those wheels are getting put through the ringer a lot more than something like your fucking and we all know the blitz 03s obviously those are going to stand up but it's not like your mid-tier companies are just putting out complete trash nowadays because people are actually using this shit this is what they can afford to run this is what they're going to put on the track you know so i would feel fairly confident buying a set of replica wheels like for example uh mike prisa has that fucking uh the, i think they're called the g33s prism which mike. are the replicas of, of prism mike might be my mike prisa <laughs> you know what the okay you got too much anyway. wine bro you gotta lay off the sauce <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's that wine that shit shot, that shit's bro now but uh <laughs> he had the g33s and he got his car completely demolished and guess what the wheels didn't get demolished 
So that right there, that's a testament. They should have definitely hit him up like, yo, we need to run an ad where it's just like your car completely fucking beer can and the wheels are pristine. They're still. fine. It's like, buy you a set of G33s. Yeah. Um, and you're still drifting on them. So. Yeah, and I think it depends too because if you look at a three-year multi-piece wheel in general versus how a monoblock wheel is going to break, a lot of times you'll see the monoblock, like the entire outside part of the bead relief will just snap off. You know what I mean? Where it exposes the bead, whereas with a multi-piece wheel, the metal will either just bend or it'll crack, but it won't like catastrophically because it's as soon as that monoblock breaks, like you're replacing the entire wheel, you know, mm -hmm. which like you said, though, they are cheap. I mean, and that also begs the question because you can get like gram lights for 400 and some odd dollars a piece, which really like when you break it down is not bad for a new wheel. Um, mm -hmm. in my opinion, at least for like a wheel that's been around for decades has proven to be a good wheel. Um, I think that that's a killer deal. And so, and then you can also look at getting NKs or Koenigs or like, you know, any of the established brands for even less for two or $300 a piece. Um, uh, I'm and, a huge NK guy. I run NK. Right. NK and I've been stuff. eyeing up monoblock shit because I'm like, dude, this is very reasonably priced. And it's still quality, like it's still fine. And a lot of times they're way lighter than multi-piece too. So I think they all have their benefits. I think the only point, I, I don't think I would get a rep of a monoblock wheel because it's like monoblocks are generally already, unless it's a TE37, like they're mm -hmm. pretty cheap out of the gate. Um, oh, oh, You know what I mean? Unless it's like titanium or a mag or like some kind of crazy high end whatever. You know, mm -hmm. I think most monoblock wheels are pretty reasonably priced. But if you're trying to get a replica of a multi-piece wheel, then I could understand that because that there's a huge dude. I, w I stayed up until 1130 last night looking at fucking wheels for this LS460, like these 22s. And I found one and it had, oh, what kind of wheels did it have on it? VIP modulars, right? Mm -hmm. And I looked up and I was like, that's a good looking wheel. And it's like 22 by 10 and a half. Shit was twenty five hundred dollars a piece. <laughs> yeah, Dog, oh shit, I'm looking at these. Who the fuck is gonna spend? I mean, obviously this guy did. Who's gonna spend ten grand on a set of wheels? That doesn't even count for tires. Granted, I will <laughs> say, if you're probably gonna tire needs, go to Tire Streets. Uh, <laughs> throw that one out there. We'll do a full ad later. Um, <clears throat> no, dude, but I did find twenty two inch tires a lot cheaper than you would think. They're like. 150 bucks a pop. Uh, mm. Anyways, no, I, I think that's where I stand. If it was a monoblock wheel, I would just shell out and get the real deal. But if it's a if if you want the multi piece look without going multi piece, I could justify why you would spend so much less. Yeah, yeah. My whole thing is nowadays, and when I'm thinking of replicas, I'm thinking of a lot of mid mid tier brands like Rodas. You have, like you said, XXR. Who else can you think of? Freaking, like you said, the Heritage Wheels do a lot of replica type stuff. Do they have those heart wheels though? Have you seen the heart wheels that they make? I I believe so. Yeah, dude, I wanna I wanna There's, set of those. That shit is sick. On. It's just it's it's all about what you you're using the wheel for. So yeah, and what you can afford, yo. I, I'm not gonna sit here and shit on people for like getting what they can get. You know. Yeah, it would be kind of shitty me because I've done stuff like that. You know, I I got that fucking Nardi wheel that was obviously not real, and I was like, well, <laughs> this is what I can afford, so this is what I'm running. If dude, I die, I die. And I was gonna die anyway. It worked, dude. I had the same thing. I ran it in the Alteza, and it was fine. You know, I mean, yeah. it's not a bad wheel by any means. But see, that was <clears> a different story because that was actually a fake Nardi. We don't con condone fake parts, not on a street like, car, but, especially. But Micah yeah. brought up a good point when we were talking about steering wheels with him was, you know, he prefers the two spoke design because he can see his feet and his gauges and everything all at once. Whereas like a three spoke is a lot sturdier, you know, because there's just more points of contact. Um, but he had, he said the same thing. You know, he was like, if it's a track car. And you're wearing a helmet anyways, like what difference is it really going to make? Um that wasn't exactly his words. I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but that's that's <laughs> what I took away from it, right? Is like on a street car, obviously you want something that's going to stand up. But at the same point, if you have a street car, you're going to fucking die if you have a three spoke <laughs> wheel in it anyways. Um, I, ta I spoke with um, his name escapes me. The dude that started Grip Royal. I was talking with him years ago. Um, and I was just like, Hey, like, how did you start this whole thing? You know, cause this was kind of in the infancy, but grip Royal blew up real quick. Like after they came out 
Um, and I was like, how did this whole thing come about? And he was like, I got into an accident, smashed all my teeth out on a fake wheel, and I started making good ones, um, mm. which is a cool story, you know, and he's a cool dude. But I think regardless, you're going to lose your teeth with a wheel like that, even if it's and if it's good, you might lose your jaw. Like, <laughs> but it's it's a terrible idea for a streetcar regardless. Um, the fucking the GTR doesn't have airbags. The stage actually does have airbags. But I always tell my wife, I'm like, yo, like all the crazy shit I've done in this car, like if we die, we die. There is no like saving grace. If we hit a tree, it's over. Yeah. So <laughs> like just say your prayer when you get in this bitch. <laughs> that goes to what you're saying. Like the having a you know full blown nardy. Yeah, I mean, maybe I won't get impaled through the chest, but I'm fucking gonna fly out the window anyway. Right. Fucking, so it doesn't matter. You're right. So yeah. um Real quick, so in our Cadell interview, right, he was talking about how Naoki just wears Crocs because that's like what he's already got on, and so he just drifts with them. <laughs> is your is your token shoe going to be the clap cleat? No, I will not be wearing clap cleats, bro. Unless they want to sponsor the show. If they want to sponsor the show, I'll, I'll be fucking wear that shit on my hands, right, dude. Let's go. <laughs> I will wear that shit on my hands. Clap cleats, come through, send us some shit. I will wear it on my hands for five full episodes. Don't give a shit. I will plug it, do whatever you want. This is my pitch to clap cleats. Um, yeah, when I saw that website, I was like, this cannot be a real thing. It's a clue in like, our sure viewers. Enough. Clap cleats are literally like mental hospital grippy socks, but for fucking. <laughs> and it's just to give you some traction for the action. Is that what they say? <laughs> yeah, it's something clap like that. cleats, dog. They named them yeah. clap cleats. Uh, I mean, it, okay. So let me. If they made a steel toe clap cleat, <laughs> I would wear that in the garage. <laughs> okay. The real question. <laughs> the real question, because they're toe socks, is would they have an individual steel for each toe, or would it be one yes. that covered all of them? It'd be one. One. It looked like a toenail on each. Yeah, I was gonna toe, say it just, just looks like fucking bad steel. toenails. Dude, I am so lazy. I wear Crocs in the garage, like when I'm working on my car, because that's I how too. lazy I yeah. am. Yeah, I've had some close calls like, with that. Yo. It's not a good move. So if they, <laughs> if they had some fucking socks that I could just wake up and hop out and go, they would get ruined. So they need to be like oil and juice resistant, which I'm pretty sure they probably already are. Juice so resistant? Clap. Yeah. Don't. You're not gonna tell me First of all, don't. Socks are I was juice thinking resistant. fucking like juice, not. <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, you know, I mean, that would make sense. They're obviously, you know, ready for vigorous use. So we, uh, if you're going to use them in the garage. Dude, I'm going to keep it a duty. buck with you. If you buy clap cleats and your concern is there's too much juice on the floor, <laughs> reevaluate your life, dude. Actually, I think that's the point of the clap cleats. Like, if there's going to be a lot of juice, you can get the grip that you need there. You know, they got rubber on the bottom. So. Can you imagine just after the fact being like, <laughs> shit, I got to clean this up, dude. <laughs> like you're not even in it anymore you're like oh, fuck man you like grab a towel or like your closest animal um, no can you imagine having to suit up to get your fucking shit going it's like well let me grab my socks and you like grab your fucking clap cleats. <laughs> these go great with my gimp suit <laughs> jesus it's like you never i gotta wear them all the time because you never <laughs> know when it's gonna go down bro <laughs> That's some of, that's some offender shit right there. I don't I don't like that. I don't condone that at all. <laughs> I keep that motherfucking thing on me. <laughs> Whips out clap cleats. <laughs> You're just hanging out with your bros, and it's like, yo, are you wearing clap cleats right now? What do you think is happening? Right, it's like five guys. Like you could never be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Uh, nothing, bro. I was just chilling. I um, I was playing Call of Duty last night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so okay. glad this is in the episode. <laughs> uh, back to car shit. You want to talk about HKS's GR86 build? <laughs> nah, bro. That was weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't talk about it yet. Uh, I mean, that we're also, does get me. One we're topic also that like I did 12 have. minutes too shy on this thing. So we got to fill time, bad boy. Let's go. We had a. No, that um, was it. We got flowers. Flowers in the ad. I know. Well, I was going to say um, the topic of doing a drift time attack build. That's something that interests me because especially with like the GTR, I've only ever seen one video of someone drifting one. 
And it was like a crazy this guy up in the mountains, like going ham in an actual GTR. And right. Noriaro, I think, has some fucking videos of that where it's like you'll see actual GTRs of the track getting drifted. So I was like wondering, what do you think about that idea of doing like a, a fucking grip slash drift build? Or would it be better to break it out into its own thing if you I... could afford it? Yeah, I, I that's funny you bring that up, dude, because when I was building the 240 and, and setting up the suspension and everything, that's what I was trying to do was, mm-hmm. you know, what's going to be the best car to have fun and just be like an all around good car to to drive, to take to grip events, to take drift events like. But the more I thought about it, there is no one good setup that's going to benefit everything. You know what I mean? Um yeah, it's not going to be perfect for everything, but is there a happy medium to be had? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, because typically with grip stuff, you want to run like barely, barely any negative camber, like negative two, right? Negative three if you're aggressive or four or whatever. But like that would be typically, typically front and rear would be like negative cambered a little bit. But for drifty boys, you know, we camber the fronts to get the contact patch, but we camber the fronts aggressively, like six or seven degrees, if not more sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the rears, are, it's like square, you know, for the max, like for the best tire wear, for the best contact patch, like the, the rear is square. And so that's the thing is like to find a happy medium would be, yeah, you could, you know, you could run like a negative four front and back or like negative four front, negative two back, whatever. And have a car that's going to do both. It just will probably wouldn't do one well. You know, it's a master of all trades. Yeah. No, jack of all I trades, master of none kind of thing. Back in the day, like old school drifting, this was much more of a feasible thing because the setups weren't so extreme either way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm thinking of like uh, uh, Keiichi Tsuchiya's like uh, 86 that he has. What do they call it? The fucking edamame, whatever. Because he, obviously he drives. Is that what he calls like, it? Not. Yeah, not edamame. It might be edamame. <laughs> he named it green bean? <laughs> yeah, it is edamame. Soybean? Fucking, yeah. <laughs> no, it isn't. But, Are you uh, serious? Dude, I promise you. Dude, that's but, funny. Uh, that's funny, man. All the carbon on that car is green, which that... I thought was really cool. That's kind of random. But um, Just imagine the drift king, and he's like, <laughs> I have to go But he has it set up to do like a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. So that's what interests me, especially because I don't want to have to have like a car for every occasion. I want to have a car. It's like, oh, today I feel like doing this. Today I feel like doing this. So, I mean, what about a car set up for autocross? I feel like a car set up for autocross is probably like, you know, the best of all worlds because it has to be able to, you know, slide and like break traction easily enough, but then have that grip when you need it. Right. So maybe that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start, I'm going to change it to Sincerely Japan, the autocross podcast. Oh, gross. Start fucking autocrossing. Is Auto- autocross people the like the CrossFit worst. people of the car world? No, actually they're not. No. I, I shouldn't say that like I'm hating on them because I've met a lot of really nice autocross people, but I also feel like autocrossers are just fucking like, dude, they just like <laughs> love their car setups. You know what I mean? They're like, well, last event I had negative 2.4 camber on the front and negative 2.3 on the back, but this time I went to negative 2.8 on the front. And I'm like, dog, nobody gives a fuck about this. <laughs> and then they're like, and I beat my lap time by negative 0.1 of a second and it's like (laughs) it's they make it such a fucking math dude and i'm like (laughs) maybe you're just driving better today i don't i don't feel like any of it's scientific it's always like oh i put different tires on and i picked up a hundredth of a second and i'm like are you sure it was the tires and not just a better line you know like that's my only gripe with that is like drifting is always like oh that was a cool run you know like i could do a better line this time or whatever but it's not like so in the weeds and I wanted to do autocross, but I just feel like it's just a, I don't know, dude, it's, that drives me fucking nuts, dude. Cause I don't give a shit enough <laughs> about that to be like, Oh, you know, my downforce is negative 0.02 G's less than it was last week. Well, see, I don't know anyone that's done autocross, but I do know that it's, it's kind of got that air about it. Oh, Darius, like, we lost you on try video. Hards. Yeah, I'm still here. Video. My freaking what is phone this? died, so my camera is Damn. out. Damn. All um, right, if you're watching yeah, the video. I got it on the charger right now. If you're watching the video, he's a bunch of dots right now. Anyways, <laughs> I'm what going saying? midnight mode. <laughs> going um, dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know, dude. I'm off in the fucking weeds on this shit. I will still pursue trying to do a best of both worlds build 
Right. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to swing, especially uh, like I'm trying to build a house here in the next couple of years. I don't think I'm going to be able to swing to jump in. Like, you know, I have to have a drift car and a track car. You just don't understand. <laughs> no. So I got probably get Yeah, you could with, definitely like, do both. I think you could absolutely do both. I'll probably do that with the 240. I can't do it yet because my exhaust is too loud and it breaks the, I think you have to be like a hundred decibels is the max you can be. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I'm so sure I'm over that dude. It's, it's basically straight piped. Um, but anyways, ending it on an autocross note, I did want to give flowers out real quick to scrape or die. He's the homie. He's a really just a nice guy. Genuinely. Um, he does some awesome drifty shit with his eight, six, which it might be getting beam swapped, maybe, uh, which would be sick. I think the beams is like the perfect platform for an 8.6 or for any older Corolla because it's not a ton of horsepower, but it's enough to where you still like get a huge power bump from the 4AG or 3TC or whatever you have in your Corolla. Um, and it just makes it... And it's it... still in the same vein. Of that too, original. yeah. It's still an inline four. Um, they're relatively lightweight. Uh, but anyways, no, he's just a great dude. And so we've done content collaborations with him before we're doing our, our helmet visors are with him, which speaking of those are like in the last stage of prototype, we are almost ready to rock on those bad boys. And so when we do, we'll post them on the store. If you haven't been to the store yet, we've got stickers posted up, uh, for low, low prices. So if you want to go help support the podcast, (laughs) that would be sick. Um, yeah. Even if Yo, you... And if you guys get a sticker, I'm sorry to cut you off, Jared, You're but good. I have to reiterate this. Oh, yeah. If you guys buy a sticker, please send us like a message with where you stuck the sticker so we can give you a shout out. That's because, true. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. We want to show off people enjoying the show and, and enjoying the products. So True. They are dope. Please slide stickers. in our DMs. I've slapped them on all of my cars. Um, you know, slap them on people. <clears> slap <throat> them on toolboxes. Babies. Just slap them wherever. Just, yeah, spaghetti, whatever you want. You could be part of the street team. That's true. So, and uh, a lot of times I put extra shit in the orders. So, maybe, maybe not. Don't count on it. But Daddy be slipping in some shit. <laughs> we might be doing a uh, Beyblade giveaway here. Soon. Yo, so, I bought that. Beyblades. Never mind. <laughs> this is way. Yo, I've been letting that shit rip all over my house. <laughs> I've been Beyblading <laughs> up the storm. <laughs> My dog is terrified of that thing. Yeah. Freaking, I was trying to show up or jump in because I was like, yo, I've never Beybladed before. So I was like, check this out. And I go like, let it rip. And it just like <laughs> fell off the little gripper thing. It just hit the ground. I was like, I guess I got to work on my gripping. <laughs> so, I did the full thing. Too. I like charged it up. Yeah. If y'all didn't <laughs> listen to the short from last week, Darius and I talked about his. Actually, this wasn't even on the short. You, you got to go to Instagram and, and listen to the Beyblade <laughs> tales. So. Darius told us, I'll, I'll recap real quick. So Darius was saying he used to be in the Beyblade cub, club, never had Beyblades. And I was like, all right, bet. So I ordered this dude a Beyblade on Amazon. And it's my it was my son's birthday last week. So I bought him Beyblades. And I was like, listen, this is kind of for you, but also for daddy. And so I got him <laughs> two Beyblades and the Battle Arena. And yeah. dude, it's been on, bro. Like we have, <laughs> and I keep beating him, obviously, because I get the wind up. You know what I mean? I got this thirty-year-old mm-hmm. man strength behind the rip, <laughs> so I'm fucking just like, Ugh! and then he goes and <laughs> he's got this little like six-year-old rip, and I'm like, yeah, no wonder, dog. So I have to really tone it down to make sure he wins. Um, but super, super off topic. Yes, thank you guys so much for ordering stuff. If you already have, no worries. If you can't, I'm not going to push it on you or be pushy or whatever. Find us on Instagram, Sincerely Japan Podcast. Find us on Twitch where this is aired early and you can see all this shit before it goes out. Um, it's also on YouTube. Comes out same time as the audio podcasts and you can find us everywhere. You can find us on Google, Amazon. Amazon's new, yo. We are... Uh, fucking simps to bezos now dog we signed that amazon contract uh oh bezos when it breaks me off some change i'll call him daddy bezos i don't give a flip flop (laughs) why are you making that my dog does not (laughs) give a flip flop uh (laughs) anyways that's enough thanks guys for listening we'll catch you next time peace